Hi. I would like to clear up any misconceptions there might be about this widespread issue of stripped input shaft splines slash clutch hub splines on late model oil heads. Uh, I recently received an email where a person was asking me if this was only a six speed issue where the input shafts were too short. The input shaft is not too short. Let me back up a little bit and let me get this camera clamped in here. Try to make this easy. This is a five speed transmission from an R75. Basically the same thing used right through 1995 on the airheads. If you see here, the clutch splines made up perfectly. When this disc is on the transmission, it sits here. This is flush, full contact. Let me remove the camera so you can get as you see, it utilizes all of the splines, all of the splined material. This is not the case on any oil head, any of them. So now let us look at an oil head clutch. Now, if this were an airhead or an older K bike, you would say, okay, this shaft sits like that. It's where it should be. It's not the case with these. Take a look at where these actually sit. All of you guys that think popping the starter out is going to show you the condition of the splines, you're fucking bullshitting yourselves. That's what you're looking at. This does not ever, ever slide all the way back to engage those splines. It slides this way. This is what you're at every day. Clutch out, going down the road, when you pull the clutch in, it moves to here. We look here. You say, nah, it can't be out that far. It is. It rides here. All of this is exposed. Look at the wear on the shaft. All of this section here is not used. This applies to every single oil head made. As I said, R850, R1100, R1100S, uh, R1150s, the R1200C, the R1200CL, the R1200CLC. They all have this same design flaw. The clutch rides on the shaft here. Unlike our airhead where it fits all the way in. Now, to answer the question of why is it the six-speed transmissions are the ones stripping the shaft? The problem is, the reason you don't see the R850 and the R1100 stripping is because they used a five-speed transmission. You are going down the road turning a much higher RPM. And those bikes surge so fucking horribly that nobody in their right mind rides it under 4,000 RPM. You're generally at four grand or higher. When they came out with the six speed, first introduced in the R1100S here in the US, followed by the 1150GS, um, people were moping down the road in six gear doing 60, 65 miles per hour. Don't put it in sixth gear until you're doing 85 or more. What happens is people are lumbering down the road, low RPM, these things surge, this is actually racking back and forth, tearing the shit out of the splines, which is why most of the bikes that have the strip shafts are actually the ones that are gently ridden. 
Uh, they don't hit red line much. They're not beaten on. You got the bikes that are hammered, especially the GSs, the guys that are off road flogging the shit out of these things. The shafts don't strip because they're under load constantly. It's not loaded, unloaded, loaded, unloaded, loaded, unloaded, racking that freaking disc back and forth on the shaft. That is what's causing these failures. Besides the fact that it's just a shitty design flaw. Let me show you a couple pictures. The last couple pictures show you the end result of this low RPM operation resulting in failure. I've seen these fail as early as 7,000 miles. Normally they fail around 24,300 to 24,700. Why? I don't know why that range is, but that's what most of what has been in my shop has failed at. The input shaft is also destroyed when you have a failure. So you ask, what is the solution to cure this design defect? Well, I guess you, would, you could approach this in three different ways. You could either change the whole flywheel clutch carrier assembly so that it moved the clutch disc back further. You could make a longer input shaft with a longer splined portion to bring the splines out flush with the end or even protruding out a little bit past the end of the clutch disc um, or you can modify the clutch disc itself. A friend of mine modifies the clutch discs I sell them, they're $600 do not call me, email me, send me a message on YouTube begging me to tell you how the clutch disc is modified. I'm not divulging that information. Uh, it's it's got a patent pending for it. I don't make it. I'm not the machinist. It's very, very labor intensive to modify these stock clutch discs. These, these clutch discs are modified to order. That means if you want one, you need to contact me. We will arrange for prepayment and you will be added to the list when I have 10 additional discs to order or more then the machine shop makes the modifications and sends them to me this is all at the mercy of their schedule if the machine shop is busy I'm not the number one customer it's going to take time I've seen these discs take up to six months to get sometimes it's as quick as three or four weeks so if you want one you need to get on the list. Don't wait until the, your clutch spline strips out and then go, oh shit, Chris, I need one like right now. I'm not gonna be able to help you. I can't even help my own customers in the shop when that happens unless I have a clutch disc here in my hands, which as I've said, I usually do not because I'm installing these as quick as I can get them. So if you want one, do the right thing and get on the list. I'm not pushing you to buy anything. BMW has not offered an upgrade for this. BMW has not offered a solution. BMW is not making improved parts to remedy this failure. Uh, so a BMW, an authorized BMW dealer is pretty much handcuffed to installing the same parts that failed in the first place. So your best solution if you own one of these is to buy the modified disc install it yourself or bring it to your a reliable independent shop or even a dealer if you have a good rapport and they're willing to install it um, and have it installed and ride for many many miles with the comfort knowing that this is likely never going to cause you a breakdown again thank you